we have been welcomed to many lands across the journey of season 2020. We thank the Wadarung people of the Wadarung country, the home of the Geelong Football Club. We thank and acknowledge the Bidigal, the Gadigal, and the Rug people of New South Wales. The Rwandri people of the Kulin Nations and the Kaurna people of South Australia for welcoming us to play the game we love on their land. And to the Wadjuk people of Perth. And the Yagama people of the Gold Coast for allowing us to be able to live and play on their lands. And finally, to play the grand final on the land of the Yagada people. We thank you. We may have lived and played across many lands in our great country, but one thing remains the same. We have been Jilang, Willembawarit, Geelong Strong, at home or far away. From wherever we are watching this evening, we take this opportunity to acknowledge traditional owners of the land. We pay our respects to elders, past, present and emerging. Bengarak Jilang. We are Geelong. We've heard it over and over again, but this really was the season like no other. It may have begun with empty crowds in Western Sydney, but what followed played out like a Hollywood script no one could predict. When the health of our most vulnerable became more important than premiership points, the Cats were there to keep the community strong. Then, when the button was pushed and footy returned, didn't we celebrate? Our home might not feel the same without our family there, but on one cold July night, two of our favourite sons shared remarkable milestones on what would be their final time on this hallowed field together. What followed from there was meant to be a 32-day excursion to the western parts of the country. It ended up being more than 110 days Ruling turnarounds as the Cats crisscrossed the country in the pursuit of Premiership points. There were more highs than lows, more hugs than hiccups. And by the time we got to yet another finals campaign, Southport and the Gabba had become our home away from home. A season like this can't just be judged on the final two hours of football. The resilience of our players and staff showed they filled the hearts of fans across the country with and the determination to lead by example and show what it means to represent this club is what 2020 will long be remembered for. To all of our members, players, staff and proud partners, we simply say thank you. We are Geelong strong because of you. Good evening everyone and welcome to the 2020 Kaji Greaves Medal Night. It all looks a bit different tonight. Thanks for joining us online. I'm also very happy to be joined by the great Billy Brownless. Bill, uh, things look a bit different this year. <laughs> hey, g'day Nate. Great to be with you. And who would have thought the 2020 virtual Kaji Greaves Medal, two blokes sitting, uh, sitting in a deserted studio except for our two uh, friends over here. Yes, our Auslan interpreters who are going to have a real workout well, trying to follow you. Well, yeah, but I just want to say Jake... Colour Jasney. Yes, well done. <laughs> but uh, they're both Geelong supporters too. But who would have thought we're sitting in here and the players, the coaches and all the supporters are watching us on Zoom? It's been that kind of year. We've all had to adapt and we've done it very well. Uh, before we get into tonight, we really want to start off by acknowledging the event sponsor for this evening, that is Morris Finance. Uh, they are a national finance leasing and risk management specialist and recognised as one of Australia's leading companies. We love Morris Finance right back since 2010. 
Morris Finance and the Cats have developed a relationship which goes far beyond the typical sponsorship and some great news in what has been a challenging year for everyone. Morris Finance is thrilled to announce their continuation of the partnership with the Cats. They're looking forward to what will be a very exciting year next year. And as the coach's sponsor and long-term partners, Morris Finance is delighted to share this occasion with everyone. So, Billy, great news that our friends at Morris Finance are uh, staying on board. You see Morris Finance on Scotty's uh, shirt, of course, a unique partnership with them. And well done to Nathan Murray, who's a great man. Uh, sorry, I'm at the Cremorne during the finals, actually, <laughs> but a very good man, and he runs a very good ship there at Morris Finance. Thank you to Morris Finance. Also got to say a big, big thank you to our major sponsor, Ford, oh. uh, along with our elite partners, GMHBA, Deakin University, Momentum Energy, Cotton On, Simmons and Morris Finance, of course. And also to all of these wonderful Premier and Associate Partners for their continued support during 2020. And speaking of Ford, we're giving away a Ford car later tonight. Andrew Mackey will give that away. And yeah. the Ford Motor Company have been sponsoring the cat since 1925. How many years is that? 95? 95, good work. The longest running sponsorship yep. in world sport, we believe. Spot on. What we know, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, a huge thanks also to our Coterie Group members, our donors, all the past Kaji winners and members that are online tonight. We know it's unusual. We'd love to be in a big room with you all uh, having a beer and toasting uh, an amazing season. But it's a bit different this year. Billy, the players are uh, all gathered together. You got a bit of intel on where oh. they might be? We don't want to tell no. the media or anything, but no. where are they? Well, they're, all the players are watching, so g'day to all the players there and coaches, of course, and members and sponsors. But there's 18 players who have booked out uh, one uh, place in Broadbeach. So g'day to the boys there. 18 of the boys are there in Broadbeach. But it's a big night, big night for the players, for the girls. Well, it used to be when we, yep. <laughs> when we did dress up. Uh, obviously not tonight. For the supporters. And it's a big uh, night to say thank you. Thank you to the players and the coaches. But thank you to everyone connected at the Geelong Cats. And that is the members and supporters who... Yep. Mate, we've all done it tough, haven't we? Sitting yeah. back here in Victoria and watching, but they they have been fantastic. So well done to you guys. Thank you very much for sticking with us, everyone. Now speaking of uh, dressing up, oh, uh, who are you dressed by this evening? Well, I'm <laughs> dressed by Jeff Banks. There he is, there, Banksy. Good work. And let me tell you, we've found a suit that fits me because. Yeah. Fair to say I'll put on a little bit. Well, uh, Nathan? Well, I've got a Jeff Banks as well, but uh, I think they've given you the dark one because it's a bit more slimming. Yeah, it indeed. Looks absolutely uh, magnificent. Uh, can I just say Jake Collar Jasney? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. Well done, uh, Brian. We also want to say a big thank you, uh, speaking of our supporters, to Hire Mark because 100 people tonight are actually enjoying a bit of a gourmet experience uh, at home, eating the Higher Mark catering. Uh, so a big thanks to Higher Mark, and I hope everyone at home uh, enjoys that. Bill, uh, the grand final um, sort of feels like a long time ago now, doesn't it? But well, we want to talk about it briefly here. Um, geez, we were excited during the second quarter and oh. half time. And, I mean, we'll talk later about what a magnificent effort it was to get there. Um, but, geez, we were proud of them. Uh, yeah. You know, especially that first half was incredible. Yeah. Oh, it was. And, you, and that's right. You're so proud, and we'll talk about it, during the year with some of the wins. And you're supporting mm -hmm. in your lounge room or in yeah. your bedroom. You had no one else to, you know, get around or at the Cremorne or somewhere. But <laughs> you just it was interesting. And then the grand final, very exciting to half time. And then, obviously, you get disappointed. Uh, fair to say we're just a bit dusty yeah. in the second half. What yeah. about him stepping up and doing some of those things? But uh, you're very proud of the players, the coaches, everyone. Yeah. 110 days up there in, mm. in, um, in the hub and things like that. So, well done, boys. Uh, I'm sure the supporters would love to say that too, wouldn't they? Well, they've been talk all year about the asterisk next to the, the premiership, but I think what really happened is that two great clubs, not yeah. just teams, clubs, yeah, clubs. the whole organisation overcomes hurdles and it's a great club that gets to a grand final in a year like this. So, What about the start? The first five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Vlosten goes down and then Gazza, of course. Yeah. So everyone, you're watching Gazza, what's going to happen? And then he comes off and oh, it's just unbelievable start. And, uh, and just on that, Sam Simpson who got knocked yeah. out too. He's uh, recovered very well. A lot of members, supporters want to know about Sammy Boy. Yep. Uh, and he's going, oh, OK, so good on you, Sammy. And uh, Menengola, good mark. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I don't want to be insensitive to Sam Simpson because no. <laughs> his health is the main thing, but that was one of the all-time great grand final marks by Menengola. And which, goals. And goal from 55, which gets a little bit forgotten, which is understandable. Glad to hear both Sams uh, are going yeah. very well. Um, now, we've got a silent auction tonight, so... Uh, 
Just bear with me here. I'll go take you through the instructions. What you've got to do is head to the cat shop online. Dot... No, let's, just, let's just do this. The cat shop online. .afl -auctions .com .au. You've got to scroll through all the items. Now, we have, there's match worn Guernseys, the player issued Guernseys, experiences, yep. memorabilia. It's wonderful stuff. Place your bid by clicking bid now. You need to sign up or sign in with your own account. Uh, update your billing information to make sure that it's a smooth process when you win the item. Yes. And uh, you can add items to your watch list. Check your bid status within your profile and make sure you keep checking back and checking your email for notification. So it closes at 10 o'clock tonight. So you've still got plenty of time. You'll be notified by email uh, if you've been outbid. So keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on us as well while you're doing it. But maybe during the breaks. Yeah. Just, uh, well, two hours and 49 minutes. Yeah. So, so get onto it. Yep. Get onto it. Now, uh... This year, uh, our leaders and administrators have done an incredible job to basically keep the club afloat, uh, let alone thriving. And uh, one of those, of course, is the Geelong Cats president, Colin Carter AM, uh, to kick off the, uh, I guess, official proceedings. Let's hear from the president now. Good evening, everyone. Each year at the Kaji, I say how we appreciate being able to thank our members face to face. But this year on Zoom, it's very different. But I have three important messages. First, we're very proud of our football team. Secondly, we're very proud of our people. And thirdly, we're very proud, very proud of our members, sponsors and our donors. This year has obviously been hugely challenging for us as it has been for all clubs. But we finish in an okay place and we've got a lot to look forward to. First, about our football team. Obviously, we're very, very disappointed to get so close. And of course, we congratulate Richmond on their win. Our fairy tales didn't play out, and we came second in an 18-team race. I've encouraged our people to understand that while they're bitterly disappointed, and yes, we desperately wanted to win that flag, it's important to understand what has been achieved. I wrote a note to our players on Sunday morning in which I said, I encourage you to make sure that your disappointment doesn't blind you to something hugely important. You have just finished an extraordinary season, one that 16 other clubs would have wanted. And so we won't panic, rather we will carefully assess what we need to do to change. Our AFL competition is merciless in that there's only one winner and 17 losers. It's not like the Olympics with its silver medals. In American football too, teams can talk about having a winning season and they can win their division or their conference and then perhaps rarely the Super Bowl. In the English Premier League, there are several ways to be successful in a season as league champion, winning the FA Cup, the League Cup, or even winning a place in the European competitions. And in all of these other competitions, the chocolates are shared around to a degree. So we're not discounting what's been achieved this year. And when we do it this way, it enables us to accurately, far more accurately focus on the things that we need to change to go that one step further. And so we say a very big thank you for the hard work of everyone in our football department, led so ably by Simon Lloyd, Chris Scott and Joel Selwood. And what about our people? We thank everyone, those living in hubs away from home and those back in Geelong trying to work remotely and under very trying circumstances. This year has had more than challenge. For some, there's also been pain. We've had to take around $6 million out of our cost structure. For some, that's been a job lost. For others, it has been a permanent reduction in their salaries. Many have had to work from home while dealing with homeschooling and perhaps also with partners who have had their own job challenges. And then there are the players and staff who left home at 24 hours notice in early July for what they were told would be a 32-day trip. But those 30 day, 32 days have morphed into 110 days on the road, living out of suitcases. Some have been separated from their families for all of that time. We're really proud of how our people have responded. Living closely, so closely together for 24 seven can be really stressful, but our people have done it so well. The AFL and also the hotel staff have told me how good our people have been. So again, a big thank you to our people, both in the hubs and back in Geelong. The third group to thank are you, our members, sponsors and donors. 
your support has saved us from a year that threatened to be a catastrophe. When the competition was put on Earth's ice early in the year, we were looking at a huge financial hole, possibly running up debts of close to $10 million. A simple explanation of this is that we receive about $1 million per game from reserve seat sales, and this threatened to dry up in a flash. But you have stuck with us. Our members have left about 90% of their membership and reserve seat income with us, and only 1% of our members have requested a full refund. Our sponsors have also stuck with us, and our donors delivered what they promised through, our, through the Our Ambition campaign. So we thank you all very, very much for staying Geelong strong. It has made a huge difference. Like all clubs, we've taken some hits. AFL dividends are down. We've had to temporarily close our higher mark catering business and our newly acquired gym. The final receipt of funds from the sale of our gaming business is being deferred. The result is that we're going to lose about half a million dollars this year, while we had planned to start the year at the start of the year for a profit of several million. But our result is going to be much, much better than the catastrophic outlook that we faced some months ago. And because of your support, we head into next season with a manageable level of debt. We had planned to be debt free and this probably won't happen, but we will finish the year without a millstone around our neck. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Like all clubs, we're still concerned about what's going to happen next year. And again, we will value so greatly your support. We have some important acknowledgements. Tom Hawkins, Patrick Dangerfield and Cam Guthrie were selected in the All-Australian team and Sam Menegola and Mark Vitsavs made the initial squad of 40 players as well. Olivia Purcell was selected in the All-Australian women's team. Olivia also won our Best and Fairest Award. Joel Selwood played his 200th game as our captain. Tommy Hawkins won the AFL's Coleman as the competition's top goal kicker. And Brian Cook was awarded the Geelong Business Leadership Award. Meanwhile, back at the club, work continues. Plans for stage five, of our stadium redevelopment are taking shape. And we're very hopeful that work can start on that at the end of the 2021 season. We will soon launch our new business plan with a focus on remaining an AFL destination club, striving towards 100,000 members and ultimately premiership success in our AFL men's and women's teams. And we're looking forward to extending our Ford sponsorship through to 2025. And that will take this incredible sponsorship to over 100 years. Inevitably, at the end of each season, there is change. And we thank those players, coaches and staff who are leaving and moving to new challenges. We also thank our number one ticket holder, Rebecca Madden, and our patron, Frank Costa, for their leadership. And on behalf of the club, I'd also like to take this chance to acknowledge the sad passing of Sandra McCall, the sister of Frank, Robert and Kevin. Sandra was a most valued member of our Honouring the Past team, and our thoughts are with Sandra's family and the wider Costa family. I've mentioned how our wonderful sponsors have stuck with us. Again, we thank Ford, GMHBA, Momentum Energy, Simmons, Cotton On, Geelong Advertiser, Deakin University, and our event sponsors this evening, Morris Finance. And I cannot close without mention of Gary Ablett. Gaz, We've loved having you back home and we thank you for everything that you've contributed to our club. Congratulations on a stunning career. And as you step into your retirement with Jordan and Levi, please know that you have our love and best wishes. That's all from me. Thank you again for your support. Enjoy the night and we look forward to life after Zoom when we can all meet together again. <laughs> yeah, we certainly do, Colin. Well said uh, by the President, as always. And congratulations to Colin and the board and all the administration for what they've done this season. Now, we're going to go to another one of our great leaders at the club who's done a wonderful job this year. Let's hear from the senior coach, Chris Scott. Hi, everyone. Chris Scott here. Uh, in a way, it, it feels a bit too soon to reflect accurately on the season 2020 for the Cats. Uh, at least for me, uh, the way I feel now doesn't really reflect what I think of the achievements of our club this year. Um, 
not just for the fact that we can't be with each other in person. Uh, speaking this year feels like a much more difficult task than it usually is. So I think I'll, I'll try to do my best to uh, avoid showing the disappointment I feel for our people right at the moment, and in particular our players, uh, and instead focus on how proud we are of them. It's really impossible to outline the challenges of the year in the, in the time allocated. There were just so many, um, but I think it's worth just touching on, on a few of the things that you know, our group had to overcome uh, this year. If I go back to uh, the lockdown period in March, we were uh, having lost the first game um, against a red hot GWS who we thought were gonna be hard to beat um, for, for the rest of the year. Um, at the stage where we were really struggling to get our head above water in the season, we'd had some uh, surgeries sort of well into the, the pre-season period that held us back a little bit. And in some ways, while the, the world was really starting to struggle, um, it felt like we were at a bit of a crossroad ourselves. Um, so we went into that lockdown period a little uncertain of what was going to happen, not only in the world, but um, with, our, with our footy team and our prospects for 2020. And uh, the group of players that emerged from that eight-week period where they really didn't have uh, a lot of um, uh, guidance from, from our people by, by virtue of the way the rules were set up, uh, was just a credit to each one of those players uh, uh, and, and the whole group collectively. They presented after that period optimistic, um, well prepared physically, uh, and really gave us a chance in that three or four week period leading into round two uh, to really attack the season. And uh, I, I think it's um, provided some guidance for us uh, around how we could look in the future. Um, you know, we, we, we've always been a club that's trusted our players um, and that, that comes with some risk. Um, there's always the opportunity within our football program for players to take advantage of that. But we have a group of players at the moment um, that we can trust implicitly uh, and will continue to do so. Um, and that will be no small way uh, due to the way that they approached uh, that, that difficult period and, um, and made our club uh, so proud. Um, and then if you have a look at the, the hub period as well, um, you know, over 100 days on the road. I think it was more difficult for some than others, but uh, the one thing that we can conclude from that period that it was as difficult or more difficult than most people would have imagined. Um, but again, the thing that makes our club so proud and should make our club so proud is just the way that all our people embrace that challenge. Uh, it was always going to be a situation where the clubs that... Um, looked on the bright side of things as much as they poss possibly could, um, would prevail through um, those challenges. And although it's still really difficult to sit here um, so soon after a great disappointment um, and focus on the positives, I, I think that we will come away a better club um, and, and it, especially a closer club uh, for the time we spent together through that period. Um, I think we also should acknowledge uh, the improvement of our team uh, on field this year is, is in no small way um, due to the organic growth of, of players, both young and old. And again, I've got to be careful uh, not to individualise too much. As I said, this is a difficult, uh, this is one of the more difficult Kaji speeches I've, I've done for, for a number of reasons. Um, and I prefer to speak to you uh, from the heart um, rather than have something too prepared. Um, but I would like to acknowledge a few of those players. Um, you know, the improvement in Brandon Parfitt um, as a younger guy, Cam Guthrie being an All-Australian for um, the first time. You know, Zach Tui is, is one of our older players um, and had a, a tremendous year and, and improved um, on seasons past in a new role. Sam Menegola, who in, in my mind would have been a worthy All-Australian um, after you know, a series of rejections throughout his career. There are others as well, as I said, it's a dangerous thing to start individualising and and then stop and, and miss some guys that are deserving. But I think it, it's worth acknowledging because it is a pointer uh, to the things that our club's got to focus on uh, going into the future. Um, there'll be some well-publicised um, ways in which we try to improve our list and it's incumbent on us to do everything we can to try to do that. Um, but that will never replace uh, the organic 
um, development and, and evolution of, of those already uh, on our list. Um, I think it's tempting to believe sometimes that there's a there's a universal and right way to approach uh, the art of, of, of list management. Um, you know, some like to look at look at it more as a science, but I'm not sure where it sits on that spectrum. But one thing we do know is that uh, uh, there is no universal right way. What we do know is that um, we're not sure what we're doing right at the moment is absolutely uh, the right way. Time will tell that, but a lot of work goes into it and a lot of thought, um, a lot of compassion for our people uh, and our players. Uh, and also the fact that we don't make any apologies for running away from uh, the pressure that comes with um, you know, attempting to, to be a top team every year. There are safer places to be in the AFL world. Um, but we could easily create a narrative where we, we manage expectations, but that's not our club's way. We're going to front up again. We're going to do everything we can to look our players in the eye, as we say every year, um, and tell them that they're a chance to, to play in a premiership uh, in season 21. Um, I think it also, uh, you know, it's... It's, it's going to be a night, I hope, where, even though it is a little bit different, where uh, a lot of individuals are acknowledged. Um, and I'd, I guess I'd like to apologise in some ways that there are some individuals who have just been so strong uh, about the way in which they, um, they exit our club that they don't want any fanfare um, and they just want to ride off into the sunset. And I think for those that, that know those individuals a little bit, and we certainly know them really well, you'll understand uh, one, that we should respect that, and, and two, it's um, one of the reasons uh, that we've got so close to, to those guys over such a long period of time that in no way does um, the limited time I'm spending on some of them uh, reflect the esteem in which we hold those guys. Uh, we talk about uh, the unity of our footy club and um, that's led by our players. Uh, I couldn't be prouder as a coach um, to have um, had so much to do with with um, some of those senior players. I'm doing my best not to name them, um, but I will name a couple um, of people. That again, there's a huge number of uh, people that have. I'm always ca careful of talking about sacrifices for your footy club. I prefer to look at it as an investment uh, in our club. But but some have made really, in football terms, the ultimate sacrifice to um, continue to work on and invest in this footy club. Um, through a brutal period, uh, knowing full well uh, that there's a very um, small chance that they were going to be able to continue uh, into season 2021. Um, so uh, in particular of our coaching group, uh, it's a really sad day for me to see um, James Raleigh um, leaving our club. He's been a Geelong person virtually all his life and has contributed so much to this footy club. I'll always consider him a close friend and he's a great coach too. He's going to be a huge asset for the Adelaide Footy Club. Um, but it, as I said, it doesn't make us feel much better um, now that we've got to say goodbye to you, Raul. So I really appreciate everything, mate. Um, and Gary Ablett, there's going to be enough spoken about Gary over the night, I hope, and absolutely you should deserve it. Um, but I, I will relay so something I said to Gaz uh, in a couple of days after uh, the, the grand final. Uh, Gary Ablett, the legend, uh, the footballer, is is someone that we'll always remember vividly. But at least on a personal note, uh, the Gary Ablett that that I will remember uh, is is the one that uh, had to leave our footy club to prioritise the most important things uh, in life, um, and then coming back and performing so well for us um, on the field that. So running around with his little boy, Levi and Jordan, um, you know, in the little cooped up quarantine that um, was the Gold Coast uh, hotel where the guys were in. Uh, guys, your love for your, for your teammates and your family and your footy club uh, is the stuff that I'll remember. Um, way before I, I reflect too much on the, the champion that you've been on the field. So again, your friendship um, will be there um, forever. Uh, and, and we look forward to having all the ablets back um, at the Cats as, as much as possible. Gee, it's even hard containing your emotions um, via Zoom. 
uh, what else? I just I'd like to to recognise all of those that stuck with us through 2020. It was it, I think it's taken the AFL world by surprise just how rusted on uh, footy supporters are in general, and it just goes to show to me that our footy club and our supporters are so much more. Uh, membership gets you so much more than a seat, uh, an entry to the game. It, 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 it gives you access to, to something bigger than yourself. And it's just it's been a pleasure for me to serve um, our footy club and, and our supporters and the people that have stuck with us so well. And it's just a, another reinforcement uh, through this year that, uh, that you people care so much. And, and we can never acknowledge it enough, um, but we should do our best. Um, I also hope that some of our, uh, our supporters, um, both financial and otherwise, will be recognised uh, tonight. But I'd like to add a few specifically that you know, really resonate with me personally. Um, I think we, our footy club's done a fantastic job uh, uh, over a long period of time, but I can really only speak to my time at the club the last 10 years. We've tried really hard to, um, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but We've, we've tried hard to partner with um, with sponsors that reflect and organisations that reflect the sort of values uh, and go about their business the way we would like to go about ours. Um, and, and hopefully um, we repay, um, you know, their support with our actions on the field. Um, but one way we try to repay what they do is by conducting ourselves uh, in a manner that they would be proud of. Um, so Morris Finance, a coach's sponsor, um, Nathan Murray, uh, you, you guys have um, become an organisation that, um, that, that inspire us. Um, Nathan is a personal friend now um, and, you know, the, the, the partnership with, uh, with Morris Finance and the Cats will go on for a long time, I'm sure. Um, Cotton On, these guys hate um, us individualising, um, but... Uh, Ash and Nige, uh, again, if, if, if I could think of an organisation that the cats aspire to be like, it'd be cotton on um, the way you guys go about your business, assuring any um, sort of personal accolades or um, um, self-promotion is, um, is something that, uh, that we really admire, I really admire, and um, you know, hopefully we're good for each other. Uh, the, 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 one last group, uh, a, a Cotera group uh, called the Coaches Club that have just been a phenomenal support to, to me personally and, and our other coaches as well um, over the last 10 years. Uh, they really invest in us uh, as people and again, um, uh, become great mentors for our coaches, um, past and present, um, which is significant. They're not just um, supporters of the, the current group, they become supporters of, of the people on that last, um, beyond um, our time at the Cats. So we're really appreciate, appreciative of that, guys, and the lengths you go to to support us. Um, yeah, it just, I can't articulate it well enough um, other than to say um, it's, it's, it's well appreciated. I'm not finished now. Um, it's, probably, it's not a long night for speeches, I guess. Um, I could waffle on for a while, but um, I think I'd just like to, to finish by um, really um, acknowledging the support of the whole of Victoria. Uh, it really has struck me. I've only been back from Queensland for a couple of days uh, and I've struggled to uh, leave the bedroom, to be honest. I've, um, it's, been a hard, it's been a hard week so far and the disappointment's still really raw. But the few people I have spoken to uh, have, have sort of helped me a little bit when they talked about uh, just how much uh, AFL footy and, and the Cats in particular have helped them through this year. I think there's a lot of uh, talk around how difficult it was for um, AFL people, the Cats people um, up in a hub in Queensland. But from what I can gather and what I've seen from my family and friends in Victoria, it was a lot harder for the people stuck back here at home. Uh, and we always consider it a privilege um, to represent the Cats uh, and in a really tough year like this one, uh, I think it just makes us feel that little bit more proud, um, if that was possible, um, to, to get the opportunity to um, put our emotions on the line, represent our footy club and represent uh, all the people um, associated with the Cats and um, try to give you 
uh, a little bit of hope that um, that the future's brighter or at the very least get through some some difficult times. So I hope I'm not um, overrating our um, our uh, our role in that. Um, but yeah, once again, um, the pride that that I have for our players and that our whole club um, uh, has to have the privilege of representing the Cats just can't be understated. So it's probably enough from me. Um, I'd like to thank the guys that that. Um, will be acknowledged tonight as well. I guess there'll be time to acknowledge the the winners, but yeah, I, I can't remember a, a time um, in my whatever it is, 25, 27 years in, in footy, um, where I've felt um, more connection um, with the footy club. Um, love the cats, and it's it's uh, it's been a, a pleasure to serve you this year. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you, Scotty. Beautifully said, as always. And uh, we will hear more from the senior coach a little bit later tonight. Billy, he's a magnificent speaker. Yeah. And the other thing about Chris Scott is um, I think we might have a new member at the Cats next year. My wife is very well, impressed with Scotty's new look. Sure. Well, just not your wife. Don't worry mm. about that. The uh, Queensland and the Sun certainly agree with him. The beard, the how yeah. brown he is. And I know uh, Brett Sutton got very pop popular down here, yeah. but let me tell you, Chris yeah. Scott is very, very popular. But also, as he, he was emotional there, which yeah. is great to see. It has been a long, tough year for players, but also the coaches. They've done mm. it tough. And uh, I know Scotty's family come back early, so yeah. he was up there you know, on his own for a while, and he's come back. So well done to Chris Scott. A really, yeah. really uh, good year. Yeah, and to his family for yes, making exactly. those, those sacrifices. All right, it's time to get into the actual vote count oh, now yes. for the Kaji Greaves medal. We'll give you a quick reminder of how the votes actually oh, work. Now, well, um, you get this wrong every year, but yeah, let, let's just listen carefully. After each game, the senior coach and assistant coaches rate each player out of 15, those combined votes are then average. That gives them their final score for that game. Right. Now, to ensure players aren't disadvantaged by injuries or by being managed, each player's highest 20 games yep. are added together. So there, if they miss one, for example, or two or three, yeah. um, or this year, only one, because we yes. only played 21, uh, their best 20 matches are what counts. So uh, tonight's leaderboards will just reflect the actual scores and then those adjustments will be made later to eliminate uh, the lowest scores. Let's get straight into the highlights uh, of rounds one to six. GWS, the grand finalists of 2019, would prove too strong for the Cats in round one, finishing off hard for a 31-point win. Ablett was the top possession getter on the ground with 24, while Duncan was superb across the ground, finishing with 21 disposals and three goals. Radical has been quite Mitch Duncan. They need this and they get it. Down back, Stewart was resolute, finishing with six marks and five rebounds from 50. 83 days on from their round one clash, the Cats had a hotly anticipated encounter with the Hawks at GMHBA Stadium. The Cats were irresistible from start to finish on their way to a 61 point win. The skipper was at his brutal best, finishing with 28 disposals, eight clearances and a goal. Directly in front, goal number five for the Cats. Boy, if they bounced out of the gates. While Stanley was prolific, finishing with 26 hitouts, six clearances and two goals. Round three saw the Cats bounce back to earth after leaving their run too late to take down a hot Carlton side, coming up short by two points. Tubby's miss and puts out the fire he started with a huge goal. It's a one kick game with 120 left. Again, Duncan and Stewart were prominent for the Cats, while Zach Tui produced 578 metres gained from his 19 possessions. It was a thrilling three-point win over the Demons at the MCG in round four for the Cats. Guffrey was exceptional with 24 possessions, 10 marks and a goal and was ably assisted in the midfield by Parfitt's nine tackle performance and Dangerfield's 11 contested possessions. Dangerfield from 50 out. How can Melbourne not be ready for that? Everyone knew about it. Two of the club's most beloved players shared a combined milestone at GMHBA Stadium in round five. 
Premiership teammates Gary Ablett and Joel Selwood celebrated their respective 350th and 300th games in style with a comprehensive 37-point win over the Gold Coast. Hawkins made sure the win was with the Cats, picking up 17 possessions, 8 marks and 3 goals. Selwood himself starred with 22 touches, 8 tackles and 5 clearances, while Duncan continued his bright start to the season. The Cats began what would become the longest road trip in the AFL's history, with a Friday night blockbuster against Brisbane at the SCG. Despite losing Duncan and Narkel to injuries in the first quarter, the Cats fought back against the Lions before putting them away on the back of an excellent third quarter. Dangerfield and Selwood were unstoppable in the middle, while Blixar's and Menengola clocked up the kilometres, providing options around the ground. So the Cats take down the Lions and go to second on the lap. All right, let's have a look at the leaderboard after the first six rounds, Bill. Um, it's going to be an interesting one tonight. We haven't discussed who, who's no. your favourite, but um, some oh. well-known names at the top. No doubt. Uh, the skipper there, uh, Joel, Tom Hawkins, O'Connor, a very good year again. Grian, good work by Grian. Jack Henry up there, Zach Tui, Ablett, Danger, Blixarves will be all towards the end there. Cameron Guthrie, uh, tenth there on 58 votes. And, uh, yeah. They're very, all in contention. Very tight, all those within those about... Those ten players are yep. all in contention. Yep, within about four votes. So, look, we'll come on to rounds seven to 14 shortly, but now mm -hmm. it's time for our first award for the night. Now, this was formerly known as the Best Clubman Award, but it's now known as the Tom Harley Award. Uh, and some words from Joel Selwell and Harry Taylor here about what this award means. This award represents a high level of respect from your teammates and staff that you work with in the football department. Early on in my career, it was stressed that you should aim to be respected rather than to be liked. And the Tom Harley Award encapsulates this desire to earn respect through values-driven behaviours that help the team to win on and off the ground and to live them 24-7. Tom Harley, one of the architects of yep. the uh, great modern era. Billy, mm. you announced the winner of Ooh. this very important award. Do we have drums? No. The Tom Harley Award goes to Harry Taylor and Mark Blixavs. Well done to both those boys. Uh, thanks very much, guys, and uh, I'd love to congratulate my uh, good mate, Mark Blitzarves, on uh, also winning this award. Um, you're a fantastic teammate, mate, and I uh, love running out with you every single week. So uh, congratulations and well done. Uh, thanks to uh, the rest of the playing group on a, um, you know, just on, on being so committed um, and so diligent in what was a very, very unusual year in all of our lives. Um, but the level of commitment that uh, every single one of our players showed um, during the hub period uh, has been unbelievable. And I think all of our members and supporters would be very, very proud of everyone's efforts. Yes, we didn't quite uh, you know, win the final game, which we would have loved to have done, but um, having a few days now to reflect, it's been a remarkable effort to, uh, to hang in there, hang tough and get to where we did considering all of the obstacles uh, that were in our way this year. So uh, well done to all of our players uh, on an amazing effort. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, all of our coaching staff and uh, staff in general who have done an amazing job in the hub throughout the season. Um, again, so many people left their families, left their homes for extended periods of time and fully committed to trying to help the Geelong Cats win a premiership in 2020. And um, we got very, very close, and that is because of so many selfless, selfless efforts of so many of our fantastic staff. So well done to everyone um, 
who put in so much work, not only in the hub, but also we should acknowledge the people back in Geelong doing a lot of work um, on Zoom calls, you know, sitting at home and, and uh, having to isolate and do things tough, but also work really, really hard to, uh, to help us and help our club, you know, try to win a flag in 2020, but also stay strong financially uh, for the future. So well done to all of those people uh, in the hub, but also at home who, uh, yeah, again, showed unbelievable commitment during what was a very, very tough year. Um, I'd love to also just say a big thank you to all of our supporters and members who have uh, stuck by us. Again, it's such a difficult time in Victoria and other parts of Australia at the moment, but uh, the fact that we had so many messages, so many well wishes, um, really did inspire us, particularly during the finals when uh, we knew that uh, Victoria was going through a really hard time and we were able to hopefully bring a bit of joy into lounge rooms um, in Victoria, but also around the rest of Australia. Um, it was something that was quite inspiring and something we referenced, certainly I did individually and personally when I was reflecting on um, what was going to motivate me to go out and play well for the team. So um, thank you to all those people and hopefully next year, um, we can see people back watching their their beloved cats doing what we do best, and that's uh, trying to win games of football and, and win premierships. Thanks very much, everybody, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks so much um, to everyone involved in the club. Uh, for me to uh, win the Tom Harley Award, uh, Best Clubman, uh, is a real honour, and to win that alongside... Uh, a person who has been a great teammate, uh, a great mentor, has taught me so much I, that I know about uh, the game uh, and he's a great friend. To win that alongside Harry Taylor uh, is probably, yeah, something I'm, I'm very, very proud of and is a huge honour. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, a great thing that um, I think everyone should, should try and work to make the club better and your teammates better um, and that's something that uh, Harry does every day he's at the club and uh, that's why I voted for you Harry um, and to be awarded that with Harry is um, yeah something I'm really proud of so uh, just want to thank everyone involved in this great club my coaches my teammates and um, yeah congratulations to, to Harry as well. Yeah, well done to two extremely deserving winners there. And, Billy, they join a very accomplished list of Whoa. Best Clubman Award winners. Do you know any? Oh, there's some great names on that trophy. Let me mm. tell you, go back to 1989 and you might find mm. one there. But, hey, well done to Harold. What a star he has been. Yeah. And we love the way he goes about it. And Blitz, who just got out of the surf. Looking good, Blitz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah life looks good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Very good. <laughs> uh, congratulations to both of them. Now, we'd like to take a moment to uh, acknowledge and remember uh, some Geelong Cats past players uh, that have passed away in 2020. Did it hurt? Didn't even feel it. How much will you get? A dollar. You? Two dollars. Good night, Mum. It's good to get great value. At GMHBA, it's the reason we put our members before profits. It's also why we offer choice of provider and rewards through AIA Vitality. So start getting great value from your health insurance. Are the big ones worth more? Search GMHBA or call to join today. Hey you, the future is here. Change is here. Are you ready for it? At Deakin University, we'll make sure you're ready with progressive real-world learning. The future belongs to the ready.
Welcome back everyone to the 2020 Kaji Greaves medal vote count. I'm very pleased to tell you that we are being rejoined now uh, by the senior coach Chris Scott who we heard from a little earlier and has done such a magnificent job uh, this season in very difficult circumstances. He's back home in Geelong which is great news. I'm sure our uh, family very, very happy to see him. Scotty, uh, welcome back. Thanks for everything you did this year and we said earlier thank you to your family. They've uh, made a sacrifice as well but um, it's been a, a hell of a year. Yeah, it sure has. Yeah, it's good to be back uh, with you guys. It's good to be back with my girls here as well. It was nice to have them up for a, a little bit, uh, open the hub, but sort of um, all the families got us through uh, a little period there. And it's, it's you know sad to come back without the uh, ultimate prize, but uh, it's good to be to be back nonetheless. And Bill. Uh... Yeah, we're about to acknowledge uh, Scotty, uh, retired players for the year. I want you to please sum up Gary Ablett in one sentence. I know it's hard. I'm <laughs> set your challenge, but how, how do you do that? Well, that's impossible. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll do my best really quickly. And I, as I, I said uh, earlier, the, the footballer speaks for himself and he'll get all the accolades that he deserves in, in that respect. But... Uh, I'd always heard that Gaz was uh, a complicated character and um, a, a little um, uh, shy and certainly yeah. didn't, didn't um, like the public attention. But seeing him up close and seeing the person he is and the things that he's prioritised in his life, I think is going to hold him in great respect. And that, that I think we've all learned through our observation of, of the real Gaz as opposed to uh, the on-field Gaz. And Scotty, uh, we will be hearing from you uh, again mm. shortly when you announce our top three. But uh, anything else that you wanted to uh, leave us with before you pop up again to uh, announce the winner a little bit later? Yeah, I think it's the, the one thing that hasn't been spoken about enough uh, is just how uh, much support that, that we had uh, up in Queensland. So not just from uh, the cat supporters back home and, and, and the Queenslanders that were able to get to the game, um, but the people internally as well. So we had a lot of people who weren't visible uh, to many back here at Geelong working uh, for the Cats and, and really keeping the club afloat. There was a lot of attention paid to the people that were doing it tough up in the hub, uh, but that was only part of it. The, the, those who were back home were really working behind the scenes without much attention or, or adulation, and they certainly deserve acknowledgement. But up there in the hub, there was just... Phenomenal to see the way that the, um, you know, the staff, but in particular the players who weren't selected every week got behind uh, our boys. Um, unfortunately, not all of those guys uh, are going to be with us next year. It's always one of the really sad times of the footy year. Um, wh whether you, you get the ultimate prize or not, it's really disappointing to see those guys go. But I think we will always remember how much they supported the guys that did take the field. And it'll be one of my lasting memories. Uh, the, at halftime in the prelim final against Brisbane at the Gabba, a really parochial home crowd. Uh, we were well and truly in the game, going pretty well at halftime. And the opposition crowd were really getting into our boys as we were coming off the ground. And our non-selected players were sitting in a bay right next to the race. And it would have been easy for them to sort of give the polite clap but they're all on their feet not just clapping not just cheering but really getting behind our boys trying to offset uh, the criticism that they were getting from the the partisan crowd and uh, I was walking you know, maybe 50 meters behind them and wow it gave me a lift yeah. um, and to think that there were some really disappointed boys in that group not to be out there but they were getting behind their teammates I thought that epitomized uh, who we aspire to be at the Cats it was it was a really nice touch and, and something that will stay with me forever. Yeah, beautifully said, Scotty. Lots of people deserve acknowledgement at the club oh, this year and you've and, done it very well there. And Joel did it also after the game when he pointed to the, all the boys over there, yeah. didn't he? So, yeah, well done to those boys up there. Who, a lot of them are in Broadbeach in that house and uh, <laughs> they're watching on Zoom. Behaving uh, themselves, no doubt. Yeah. Scotty, thanks for, for joining us again. And we, as we said, we will see you uh, again a little bit later in the night to announce the, the top three. But thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Well done, Thanks very much to Chris Scott there. Now, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Gary Ablett, um, I mean, what do you say? I think we just go to the highlights reel, but uh, he just, we love him and here's some of his best.
And the Cats by four points as Gary Ablett Jr. is one of the four to change warming up. Handball over the top. Ablett from the forward front of the area. Ablett goes the goal. And Gary Ablett has kicked it. This is... It's just so symbolic of his football, isn't it? It's just... Now, Ablett gets through. He can do plenty. Looks it back. Have a look at the goal, size it up. That is a magnificent shot. <laughs> Stretch for it. Here's Ablett from the pocket. High ball. Don't tell me. Yes. Goodness oh, gracious oh, me. Oh, oh, no. Goodness gracious me. Thanks, Gaz. That's, uh, yeah, the best way to sum it up. That was classy by Richmond, what yeah. they did, and those images of yep. Gary with Jordan and Levi were just beautiful stuff. And, and, and a broken shoulder that yeah, we'll find out yeah, yeah, this yep. week. So, But what, 357 games, yep. that's 19 years of playing football at the highest level, eight All-Australians, five MVPs, voted by the players, that yep, is. Most ever. Two Brownlows, two Premierships, and I reckon... Five million smiles on faces yeah. all throughout the world. Don't yeah. worry about Look, that. You, you know Gary better than most. I mean, he was around the change rooms as a little tacker when you were playing and you played with Dad, you yeah. played with Gary. Do we do we ask the no. big question or not? <laughs> well, I, I, Gary was there and Nathan mm. too. You know, they used to come along and they'd pinch all the soup and, <laughs> and, and do all those sort of things. But uh, I play with his old man. I'm a bit one-eyed. I think his old man... If we're going to watch Gary Jr. and Gary Sr., I'd go and watch Gary Sr. Yep. But you need Gary Jr. to give it to Gary Sr. Uh, love them both. What a name it has been at the club. But I'll just go with Sr. I'm going to just say equal and be well, soft and well done, make a decision. <laughs> but well done to Gary and all the best to you, Jordan, Levi, your whole family yes. uh, in retirement. You're a magnificent player and a wonderful person. Um, now, reminder, silent auction, still time to bid. Uh, it's open until 10 o'clock tonight. There's some great stuff there. What's so the make link? Sure you get on. Uh, we, uh, it's up on the screen there. Yeah, people can work that out. Take a screenshot. The Cat Shop yourself. Online. The Cat Shop Online. Yeah, that's dot AFL auctions .com .au. And we've got Erin in there from Ausland doing some of her best work now. Or she just got uh, voted out. But uh, look at that. 30% <laughs> off until tonight at 12 o'clock. Yeah, jump online, go to the Cat Shop online, 30% off all the wonderful products there. So please support the club, get some there great merchandise. Um, you might even find a Collar Jasney badge in the yeah. Cat Shop. Here we go. <laughs> number eight. Is that what you said? Number eight. Yeah. He's cheating now. He's cheating number eight. <laughs> all right, let's get back to the vote count, Bill. Uh, let's through, through from rounds seven to 14. Here are the highlights of those matches. Perth was the next stop for the Cats as they faced Collingwood at Optus Stadium. Difficult weather and injuries hampered the Cats as they went down by 22 points. Guthrie's 28 possessions and 8 clearances was the standout performance for the Cats, while Blixarves and Dangerfield battled strongly. It was a damp affair again for the Cats in Round 8 as they took down the Dockers by 32 points at Optus Stadium. Guthrie's 30 disposals and 7 clearances set the Cats up, while Tui's drive provided numerous forward forays. Out to Parfit with a bit of a wind-up mini goal. He's hit that pretty well. And 
under the circumstances, and he loves it. Starting to go to work. Well done, Guthrie. Gave it to Tui. Dangerous from here. Zach Tui flushes it. A spirited effort against the Eagles wasn't able to get the win for the Cats as they went down by nine points in round nine. Duncan's eight score involvements and Stewart's 11 intercepts were crucial for the Cats. Back in Brisbane for round 10, the Cats were in control all night against the Kangaroos, registering a 33 point win. Guthrie was dominant with 29 possessions and six clearances, while Myers was dangerous with four goals and Henry repelled plenty with eight intercepts. A combined nine goals from Hawkins and Rowan spurred the Cats to a 59-point win over St Kilda in round 11. The forward line feasted on the delivery from Menengola and Duncan, while O'Connor produced an incredible defensive performance on Dan Butler. Dangerfield was prominent early, setting up Hawkins for his first of six goals on the night as the Cats announced themselves as serious contenders with a 60-point win over Port Adelaide in round 12. Cam Guthrie and Menengola were prolific in the middle, while Taylor kept Dixon goalless, but it was Hawkins who stole the show with one of the best individual performances of the year. This has been an outstanding win for Geelong. They make their mark. Cam Guthrie continued his blistering form when the Cats met the Crows in round 13. He was instrumental in the middle alongside Duncan, who also pushed forward to kick two goals. Stanley was another strong contributor as the Cats made it four straight wins with a 28-point victory. And he feeds Duncan, but puts the finishing touches on this one. The Cats swept the record books aside in round 14, recording the club's biggest comeback victory since 1931, after trailing by 36 points at quarter time against the Western Bulldogs. Ryan Myers helped swing the momentum back the Cats' way. A brilliant chase down by rookie Brad Close in the closing stages led to a Rowan sealer, with the Cats recording a memorable 11-point victory. McRae's handball, Rowan's going to ice it. He does. What a last quarter he's having. Now that was an amazing win. Almost, forget about some of these games, you though. Do. Incredible comeback. Yeah. Um, Leaderboard after 14 rounds, uh, we saw a lot of highlights from Cam oh, Guthrie well. in there and he's made his move. Yeah, from 10th to 1st, Cam Guthrie there, Blix, Tom Hawkins, Danger, O'Connor, Menengola, Henry, Duncan, Myers and Jeb Buse. And this is not voted like the Brownlow, as we know. The Brownlow is voted by umpires, mm. this is voted by coaches. So if you play your role, yep. Cam Guthrie, and if you play every game, uh, you get votes, so that's yep. what it's all about. So that's why Cam's up there after 14 rounds. He's the leader. Go, Cam. Now, we saw that great chase down by Brad Close uh, in that round oh, 14 yeah. match against the Bulldogs. Now we're going to take a look at all the club debutants for this year. It's a pretty settled and mature side, yeah. but we did unveil some exciting uh, new players yeah. for this season. Jack Stephen, there you go. Jack Stephen nails it for the Cats.
uh, some exciting players uh, playing their first games for the Cats this year and they have a big future. All right, time now uh, for another award. This is a very important one because it's voted for by the fans. It's called the Ford MVP. Um, and the winner is one of our big improvers for this year. Made the All-Australian team for the first time and he's leading the best and fairest after 14 votes. And that is Cameron Guthrie. Um, great story, Bill, yeah. Cam Guthrie. Um, I mean, he's been a good, solid player for a long time, but went up this year. He just took the next step, or next two steps, really. So he could have won most improved, most consistent, uh, but well done on winning the Ford MVP. Well done, Cam. Well done, Cam. And speaking of Ford, uh, thanks to our wonderful friends tonight, we are giving away a Ford. It's a brand new Ford Focus, Focus. to a lucky Cats member uh, just for voting this year. Now, to announce the winner, we're going to cross to Triple Premiership legend mm. and uh, Gary Ablett's personal minder and personal trainer, Train. yeah. uh, Andrew Mackey. Mac. Thanks, boys. And as we know, we love to reward our members down here at the Cats and always looking at ways to give back to them. Thanks to Ford, we're giving away one Ford Focus active vehicle, C519. Value at $34,812 drive away. The all new Ford Focus is built to improve your driving experience in every way. The interior of the all new Focus is more comfortable and spacious than ever. Packed with intelligent technology and innovation. Powerful yet efficient engine. All financial members, 18 years of age and over, of the Geelong Footy Club were put into the draw and three finalists were randomly chosen. Finalist one, Stephen Nichols, member for 22 years. Finalist two, Alicia Atwell, member for five years. And finalist three, Harry Unkenstein, member for eight years. The contestants have randomly chosen an envelope and in the envelope, there's numbers one, two, and three. The lucky contestant who is the eventual winner will have the key at the bottom of their number on their pool of footies inside this cage. And to get through it, they've just got to scrummage through and down the bottom they'll find their key and they'll be driving off on this new Ford Focus. All right, guys, the time has come. Do we know what we have to do? All right, three, two, one, get into it. Ford Focus, magnificent. They've got to find a footy <laughs> with a key going? on it. Well, just hurry up, Mac. Get this going, will you, mate? You're taking a bit long here, but... Uh... It's a big prize, though. You've got to check each ball thoroughly. You don't want to miss out on your uh, Ford Focus. Who will it be? Uh, all the Ford footies there, the Ford Focus. Mag Come on, Mac, where are you? Harry, You're supposed to talk yeah. through this. Harry in the middle looks like he's got more footies than the others. He's taking a while to get through them. Yeah, he's just checking <laughs> everything. <laughs> here we go. Come on. Who do, we want? Who do you think? No? Well... Uh, Alyssa, I think it is on the left, uh, seems to be getting through her balls pretty quickly. She's almost run out, so she's out. She's out. Eliminated. It's Steve and Harry. Jeez, it's down the bottom. Of course it's down the bottom. Come on, Mac, get it yeah, going. Yeah, they wanted to put it down the bottom to make this uh, segment as long as possible. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Good friends from Ford. Thank you, Ford. What a magnificent view. 1925. And surely, Harry, this oh, is the one. Here we go. Yes. Hey, you got the key, mate. Congratulations. I don't know if I can shake your hand, but I won't. We'll keep our distance. Yeah. Congratulations, mate. How do you feel? Ecstatic. That's amazing. I can't believe that, actually. So you're going to be driving home in this new Ford Focus. Um, what does that mean to you, mate? Well, it's certainly not going what I've got. Um, yeah, I can't believe that. Congratulations. You've obviously been a member now for a number of years. And yeah. what, what does it mean to be a member of this footy club? Oh, it's incredible. It's an incredible club. It's been great. Just not even the on-field success over the past few years. It's just uh, it's a great community club and it's great to be part of it. Um, we're happy to have you, mate. We appreciate all the support, as, along with Alicia and Stephen. And we thank you guys too. No one's going home empty-handed tonight. There's membership packs in there for everyone. But um, you are the lucky three here tonight. We've got so many members, um, obviously, out there in Australia. So we thank you all. But congratulations to you, Harry. This is yours Thanks, tonight. Mate. So awesome. well done. Congratulations again and back to you boys. Yes, well done, Mac. Uh, thank you very much to Ford. Well done to our winner. Pretty good win for Harry there. Guess where Harry uh, went to school? I don't know. Geelong College, where you went to school. I did. And where Kaji Greaves went yes. to school, Geelong College. So well done to you, Harry. Do you want to know some trivia about Kaji Greaves? Yes, please. Um, there was a famous magician at the time when he played called Kajilo. Oh. And he was a magician with the ball, so yeah. he was named after him, Kaji. Fair There you go, you should know that. Because his first name's Edward Greaves. Yes, Edward so. Kaji Greaves.
There well you done. go. There Bit you of go. history for everyone. I'm sure you are very excited about that. <laughs> now, on to our uh, next award, and it is uh, our Best Young Player Award. Mm. Uh, and that goes to a man we have spoken to a little bit in the last few minutes. Uh, he really gave us a spark through the middle of the season. Uh, wasn't quite in the side at the end of the year, but he has got a big future at this club. And congratulations, Best Young Player at the Cats this year is Brad Close. Congratulations to Brad Close and a goal with his first kick, Bill. Well, he did. That's right. He lives with Jake Collajasny. Sorry, uh, Rhino over there. <laughs> and, of course, Jake has played 110 games yep. and never kicked a goal. Brad plays 33 seconds and kicks <laughs> his first goal. So, uh, well done to uh, Closey there. Good effort. Yeah, well done. And he has got a big future. Now, uh, of course, we're looking forward to seeing much more of Brad uh, in the long sleeves, particularly at home next year. Before we do head into the, the final rounds of the season, we want to make a big special mention of GMHBA, our stadium sponsor. It was sad that we couldn't bring the fans together at GMHBA Stadium this year. It is the heart and soul of our great community. And of course, we want nothing more than our members and corporate sponsors to return to those seats in 2021. And uh, look, we had challenges this year, but we were all able to work together with GMHBA uh, to provide an outlet for celebrating our passion for footy health and well-being and for this reason uh, we remain stronger together and healthier together and just can't wait to get back oh. to matches there next year. Well, Bill. three games there this year at GMHBA. The beat the Hawks by 10 goals. That's yep. always a nice win. We beat the Suns by 37 points and uh, we played Carlton there also. I don't remember that one. No. Do I you know don't... what GMHBA stands for? There you go. Ge oh. Geelong Medical Health Benefits Association. You can ask Lingy, he knows that. Oh, he does. Mm, He's the ambassador. Yeah. Um, let's hear a little bit more from GMHBA now. We are Geelong, the greatest team of all. We are Geelong, we're always on the ball. We play the game as it should be played. That's a great video. Very clever. Well done to whoever uh, put that together. Bill, we had a buy in round 15, so yeah. now we're going to do the votes for round 16 to 18. Let's have a look at the highlights from those matches. The Cats made it six straight wins with a 66-point victory against Essendon in the annual Power Call Country Festival Clash. Menengola was magnificent in the middle. Not clean, but still time. Menengola, a final kick at goal. Umpire shuffles, it's straight in their thumb. While Buse and Blixars enjoyed getting on the end of a couple. They run in numbers, the catch through the middle of the ground. Buse has one, he's pitched it on the green, it's rolling towards the hole, and it drops in. As Jenkins had a Geelong debut to remember. Zach Tui became the second Irishman to play 200 games when the Cats met the Tigers in round 17. Ben Jarvis made his debut. Jarvis takes a terrific mark. Here comes 
against Tom. It's a whopping, fucking ball. It's back to 22, and you guys are bored yet. But unfortunately, it wasn't a night to remember, as Richmond recorded a 26-point victory. With a top four berth at stake, the Cats left it late to overpower the Swans by six points. Got the brakes drive, got to be quick. Isn't quick. After trailing early, Dangerfield willed his side back into the game with a brilliant three goal display to get his side over the line. Here comes again, Paddy Dangerfield. He's always been his strength, the set shot kick, but for back to back goals, he's kicked the last. Men and Gola and Guthrie were other standouts for the Cats as they entered the finals in winning form. Lloyd inside 50, Cats everywhere, the Swans hand on the football, low bottom, important smother, Blitzarves, Blitzarves saves the day and the Cats hang on, the Cats secure the double chance. And let's take a look at the leaderboard after 18 rounds, Bill. This is the last time we actually see the leaderboard before yep. we go to the four finals. There's Cameron uh, still in front. Uh, Mark Blitzhaves. I wonder if he gets uh, votes for that smother against Sydney. Yeah, that sure. was unbelievable. Tomahawk Danger, Meningola. Jack Henry, good on you, Jackie boy up there. O'Connor, Jeb Buse, Mitchie Duncan and Grian uh, rounds out the top ten. Remind you how many... Good local players there are. Jack Henry, uh, yeah. St Mary's boy, where I used to play. Yeah. And uh, uh, Grind, a Grovedale boy. Grovey, where you used to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great recruiting from And <laughs> Danger. Yep. From Moggs Creek, where yep. you used to swim. Yep, yep. Yeah. It's all about me. Yes. Let's talk about me as much as we can. All right, we'll be back with the four finals matches and the votes from those uh, very shortly. But uh, now we're going to acknowledge some milestones. It was an incredible year, including one magical night when two of the Cats' favourite oh. sons celebrated massive milestones. So let's take a look at those who reached those important marks during the year. Well done to all those players for reaching those milestones. Time for our next award now. And the Geelong Football Club continues to make a big impact in the Geelong community and proudly so. Uh, take a look uh, at the screen to see a summary of what the Cats have been up to uh, in the community this season. And we're also going to announce our Club Community Champion Award that goes to a man who does so much great work around Geelong and elsewhere, the captain, Joel Salwood. Thanks, guys. And what a huge honour. I mean, Tom Hawkins won this award last year and hit this speech uh, out of the park. So I'm not going to try and compete with him, but it is a real honour receiving the community award. Uh, our team back at home put in huge hours in making sure us guys become better 
people within our community and it's a real, uh, I mean, what we've been able to do this year in conjunction with them being in these tough restrictions, is, it's made me really proud as a member of this footy club. So I hope we've reached enough people back there. I've got a couple of people to thank though. We've got um, a couple of people in our digital team up here, Chelsea and Dave, who have gone behind the scenes and done a hell of a lot of hard work um, up here to obviously get back to you guys and show you guys what we've been doing. Um, but also um, being around just to look after the little things for us too. So we can't thank them enough. And also, I just wanted to say, whilst we're talking about this, um, to all of our guys um, within the hub and the whole squad, I mean, we've got 160 people at one stage that um, joined this hub. It's been an unbelievable experience being able to share it with everyone. We'll be able to write a great book on it and I'd love to hear everyone's story so we can share it with every one of our members and supporters out there. But for now, I'm going to keep it short because this night's about honouring um, you know, the, the players this year. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the um, recognition and uh, keep going those cats. Well done. Well done, Joel, and congratulations to our club community champion. I just want to say a quick word about Joel. Last week I went down to Geelong and did a story with um, Sammy Morfitt, the much-loved oh, water boy, yes. and his relationship with Joel yes. is something very, very special, and there's so much, some of that, obviously, the work Joel does is captured on camera yeah. there, but he does a lot of things that people don't know about, yeah. and it's very genuine and very heartfelt. He is a magnificent person Great in our community, Joel. Yeah, a lot of players do a lot of good work and mm. Joel certainly, he's a skipper. He's just one of those players you love. And you know what? He cares. He cares for his players, his teammates, he cares for the club and he cares for the supporters. So well done, skipper. You are a star. Yeah, good on you, Joel. And a big shout-out to Sammy Morford, too. In case, yes, uh, he'll be watching. Good on you, Sammy. On you, Sammy. <laughs> now, uh, let's get down to the business end of the season. We had some... Uh, well, highs and lows through the finals. It was an incredible uh, month of football. To talk us through uh, how the season ended through the finals and also his thoughts on the vote count so far, let's have a chat to our football manager, Simon Lloyd. Thank you to Nathan and Billy. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone, players, family, staff and members before moving on to the leaderboard. Uh, first of all, thank you to the players who represented us bravely, valiantly. It hurts, uh, but we'll support each other. And as Chris Scott always says, we'll be okay. Uh, we'll get stronger from this. Thank you to those on our list who didn't play. Uh, they've had some enormous challenges during the year with no formalised games. Uh, your ability to put the team before yourself makes everyone at Geelong proud. And it's a real credit to each and every one of you. So thank you. Uh, to those players and staff departing, uh, we thank you for your commitment to the club. <laughs> Uh, once a Geelong person, always a Geelong person, and you'll always be welcome back at the club, so thank you. Uh, thank you to the families, uh, all the families of players and staff. Uh, the unconditional love and support you show is so important, and uh, this has been a very special year and one that we should all be very proud of. And thank you to our staff, the investment you've all shown, many spending time away from loved ones, uh, with the challenges of job uncertainty, uh, we thank you for your care, your professionalism, uh, your commitment to, to the cause. Uh, it was great. So, And to our members, uh, thank you for staying Geelong strong throughout the season. And I'm sure you'll do the same uh, with the upcoming season. So for the footy department and the club, it's now time to rest. It's time to recharge. Uh, stay safe and uh, stay united. So on to the leaderboard. Uh, at the end of round 18, the leaderboard for the 2020 Kaji Greaves medal is in first place, Cam Guthrie on 191 votes. In second, Mark Blitzarves on 188.5, so it's close. In third, Tom Hawkins on 185. We then have Patrick Dangerfield on 176 and Sam Menegola on 175. And the, from six to 10, we have Jack Henry, Mark O'Connor, Jed, Jed Buse, Mitch Duncan, and Grian Myers. So that's our top 10. Now the highlights from the final series before Chris Scott will announce our winner. Thank you. Thank you, Lloydy, and well done on what you achieved this year. And as uh, Simon showed there, it's tight at the top, especially the top three. 
And the other one I reckon keep an eye on is uh, Mitch Duncan. He's a should be a big mover in the finals. But it's all going to hinge on these four finals, starting, of course, with the qualifying final where the Cats headed over to Adelaide to take on Port. And it was sort of a frustrating night in a way, Bill. I felt like we played fairly well. Um, there's a reason they finished on top. It was, at, right. it was in Adelaide. Yeah. Um, Always a tough game, Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval, of course. We hung in there. I thought we really hung in there. Uh, went down by 16 points in the end. But uh, a couple of boys were outstanding. Uh, Zach Tui was good, but Lockie Henderson uh, with yeah. his eight marks was very important. Isn't he a great story? Great story. He's um, much, much loved by his teammates. It's so good to see him resurrect his career. But, uh, Mitch Duncan was good. Yeah. Parford, who had a really good year. Reece Stanley also had a good year. They were all yeah. good here, but it was a tough game because uh, they're were, they were a tough side. They, yeah. you know, as you said, they finished top two uh, for a reason. They're a very good side and always hard to beat over there. And I think we sort of came out of this game not panicking, frustrated that we didn't win, but thinking, OK, we're playing all right. And when you look at the form line, I mean, they almost knocked off Richmond. So they're a quality side. And uh, anyway, we obviously had to regroup after losing this, didn't get the week off, and we headed back up to Queensland for the semi-final uh, against the Pies, who had oh, oh. upset West Coast the week before and were looking pretty dangerous. But, geez, this oh, one what about was it? not expected, I oh. reckon. This was magnificent because we smashed the Pies here. They were flat, there's no doubt about that. But just a great start. We just need a good start. Zach Tui goes back and kicks that. And, of course, it was at the Gabba, and we love playing at the Gabba, winning by 68 points. Mm. And Hawk was very good, but what about Danger? Yeah. Danger kicking four goals, 19 touches... And two of those goals, here's one of them. Yeah, nah. But they were a banana nas, yeah, if yeah. you don't mind, from the boundary. And have, a, have a look at the face on him after he kicks. He's all business. Yeah, business, all, all business. All business that night. Oh, that man. man, Mitch Duncan, was very good again with his 30 touches. Uh, well, here he goes again. Here comes for the him. other nana. But it was a very good feeling after this night that, it, you know, the match was basically over at half time. Yeah knowing that, OK, we're back in this and then we can almost not coast through the second half, but it gave us a chance to, um, I guess, just set ourselves reset. up for the last two. Yeah, weeks. reset. But Tom Stewart, too, he, he was outstanding. Uh, 18 disposals. He took 14 marks, Tommy yeah. Stewart. What a player he has been across half back. There he is there. Duncan, this will go to uh, Hawkins. Or, oh, no, danger. Look at him here. One of his four. He was on fire. And a beautiful win over Collingwood. Yeah, that was a great night. And so from here, we went on to the prelim, uh, still in Brisbane, of course, against the Lions, who, remember, two weeks prior had knocked off Richmond. So this was a 50-50, it felt like, going into it. We were in good form, but they're a bloody good side and they're playing on their home deck. And, yep. um, well, the 40-point margin at the end probably didn't tell the full story. It was pretty tight. Yeah. But it was a very impressive prelim performance. They were up and about the Cats, there's no doubt about that. They were ruthless, as I like to say. They were very good. There's Hawk there. He kicked that one around the corner. Danger, again, was very good. Duncan was dominant in the middle there. And this Gary Rowan kicked oh, okay. three or four, I reckon. He was good. Colour uh, Jasney was good. Here we go. And <laughs> Jack Henry, the lizard. The lizard was very good too. That would have been nearly mark of the year. Yeah. And just dropped it in the end. There he is, the lizard. Look at him. Kicked a goal, actually, Jackie Boy. Goes, it's a wobbler. Wobbles all over the place, but goes through. And he's high up on the leaderboard, too. So he's uh, had, had a great year. All right, on to the grand final. Of course, we know the result didn't quite go the way we wanted, but fantastic achievement just to make the grand final. This first couple of minutes, unbelievable. That's it. Uh, good to see Paddy was cleared of that, too. Um, it was a nasty incident, of course, we were worried about uh, Vlosten. And then this... Well, well, what am I? I mean, you couldn't believe what uh, was going on, could you? Yeah. Like, and then he come back out, and yeah. uh, the crowd just noticed they went berserk when Gazza came back and out. And we found out since then that the shoulder was broken, so it was a very gutsy effort from yeah. Gaz. But you knew the Tigers were always going to come back. Look at that goal from Danger. He had his the kicking boots on during the finals. He kicks that. That tap there, Selwood to Hawkins. Goal there. The Cats are on top yeah. and playing good footy, as we know. 15 points, I think the lead was. There it is again. At yeah, half-time. Got out to 22. We probably all felt like it should have been maybe five goals plus um, at half-time. Yeah. That margin would have been uh, would have been fair. Of course, Dusty, that goal just Good before half-time. Yeah. Here's Grian. Grian, Screaming through the middle. So there it is there. So And Mitch Duncan, I mean, 
you know, until Dusty kicked those goals towards the end, he would have probably been leading the Norm Smith medal, Mitch Duncan. So he's had a, a huge final series, and it's going to be interesting to see how that's reflected in the votes. Because yeah, well, Stewart was good again. He just didn't play enough games. There's Sammy Simpson. We spoke about him. That was uh, hard to watch that. Yeah, well, his dad, his dad was watching it back in Ballarat, poor old Sean and Naomi back in Geelong. And uh, he was OK. But that's a lovely goal from Menegola. Yeah, incredible grab. And goal. So, And then there was a bit of a flicker there. But uh, just you got to say, two good yeah. Tigers. Well done to them. But uh, still proud of our cats. Absolutely. Dusty, an incredible player. But uh, very, very proud of our boys for a remarkable season. All right. We've been through the four finals there, as we mentioned. I reckon Mitch Duncan might make a move up the leaderboard. Cam Guthrie was leading uh, after round 18. Let's go to the senior coach now, Chris Scott, who will announce the top three place getters in the 2020 Kaji Greaves medal. Uh, thanks, boys. It's my pleasure to announce the third place in the uh, Kaji uh, Greaves medal for 2020 is a guy that uh, polls very well. Uh, in, in this award has done over a long period of time. And I suspect the reason that he does poll so well is because um, of his work ethic and uh, the ease in which he um, uh, applies himself to his role. He's a joy to coach. Um, I know I speak for all the assistant coaches um, when I say that. So Mark Blitzarves, third place. Congratulations, mate. Thanks very much, guys. Um, probably first off, I just want to acknowledge everyone involved in this great football club uh, with this season. Um, we've obviously, uh, it's been like no other and um, I'm just very proud to be involved in this club. And uh, I think the way we've gone about it, um, everyone as a whole has gone about it. It's been a, a credit to us and um, has gone a long way in, in leading to our success um, in making the grand final, obviously not winning it, but um, so yeah, to everyone involved, um, the supporters back home, the supporters at the games, um, the sponsors, the members, uh, everyone working involved at the club that were back home, not able to join the hub. And then to those in the hub as well, uh, I just can't thank you guys enough um, for, what, for what everyone's done this year. Um, and then probably just finally is, is to my coaches and teammates. Um, I, I've, I love playing for this club. I love football in general. And, um, yeah, you guys, uh, are a big reason for that. So, um, yeah, to finish top three in the, in the Kaji Greaves medal is, uh, is a great honor and, um, something I'm very proud of and, um, yeah, congratulations to everyone and, and thanks again. Well done, Blitz. Uh, second in the Kaji Greaves medal for 2020 and grateful forward Tom Hawkins. Thank you, Scotty. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously, it's. Uh, I think Mark before hit the nail on the head with um, with uh, you know what he said. Um, certainly, in particular to um, a lot of the people uh, involved in the footy club, um, it's been uh, well documented how um, unique the season's been. But um, you know, to everyone that I shared the experience with. Um, in, in the hub this year, uh, from Sydney to Perth to uh, finishing up on the Gold Coast. It, um, 
it was a tough situation at times, but we certainly uh, we certainly had a lot of fun on the way. So I'd like to thank everyone that was involved, um, the staff members at home that that couldn't um, that couldn't come along, um, that that worked tirelessly behind the scenes. Um, thank you for all your work. Um, I wanted to thank uh, all the coaches, um, you know, Scotty and, and Boris in particular that have, um, you know, made, made my job really, um, really easy each week. Um, you know, I'm sort of, I don't feel like, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a player that, um, that um, you know, really studies the game that well. So I, I, I do rely on, um, you know, my coaches uh, to certainly help help me out. So. Um, they've been wonderful uh, to the squad of players. Um, it's been it's been an incredible year. Um, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, one that I've never thought um, you know I, I would do. So um, they, they've been wonderful, right from um, you know f from uh, those that I played with to those that that I didn't get the opportunity to play with. Um, to my uh, family back home for the support, um, they've been wonderful in looking after everything at home to my wife, Emma and, uh, and my kids for their sacrifice that they've made. Um, they've been wonderful. So it's been a great year. There's so many people to thank. I'm, I'm sure I've missed um, some along the way, but um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's been wonderful. Uh, we didn't quite get there, but we'll, uh, we'll have a go, regroup and, and have a go next year. So well done um, and have a great night. Thanks, Hawkey. Um, great result. Um... But there can only be one winner. Uh, and I'm so proud of this guy. He started at the Cats at the same time I did. It was an emergency for the 2011 uh, grand final. Uh, would have been um, fitting with the work he's done uh, over the last decade to get to this level if he could have played in his first premiership on Saturday night. The fact that he didn't doesn't take away from uh, his individual achievements this year in all Australian for the first time and his contribute contribution to the team on and off the field uh, has been immense. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Cam Guthrie. Well done, mate. Thanks a lot, Scotty. I would just like to say congratulations to Mark and Tom for having outstanding seasons uh, themselves. And a lot of our other teammates as well are in the same boat. I don't think there was necessarily one standout player for the year and this award could have gone to many others. Uh, I'd also like to say uh, thank you for the support from my teammates, other teammates all season, uh, as a few of the guys have touched on. Uh, it really was a season where we had to rely on each other. Uh, we were away for a long time together in the same boat. And I think everyone really uh, enjoyed each other's company and uh, we really stayed as a united team. Uh, I would also thank uh, some of, or all of the coaches uh, for uh, putting all the plans um, together for our team to thrive out on the park. Uh, you put in a lot of hours and all the boys really appreciate it. Uh, in particular, uh, for me, I would love to uh, give a big thank you to Scotty uh, for being a great coach and a great um, person around the club for the last 10 years. Uh, I couldn't see myself really playing under another coach at the moment, so I uh, really enjoy uh, our relationship. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to two of the assistant coaches I work really closely with Matthew Knights and Nigel Lappin for all the feedback and guidance they've given me uh, this year and in previous years. Uh, I'd like to extend my thank you to uh, all the staff uh, that came away in the hub and the staff that remained at home. Uh, they put their lives on hold uh, to ultimately ho uh, hopefully get ourselves into, into the position uh, we got into uh, on Saturday night. Unfortunately, we couldn't go uh, all the way, but um, I can't give enough uh, thanks for that. 
I'll probably just give a quick thank you to the sponsors as well, uh, in particular Cotton On, Ford, uh, and GMHBA. Um, I'll say uh, a, a big thank you to my partner Lauren and Carmen uh, for coming along uh, to the hub and supporting me all year, and also the rest of my family and friends for, uh, yeah, I guess being involved in my whole football journey. Um, just lastly, I'd like to say uh, to the supporters at home who have uh, been there all year for us, uh, remained members, uh, the money in the footy club allowed us to uh, survive and thrive. We really have this year. Uh, we can't thank you guys enough. I know a lot of you guys will be watching now and what you've done this year has been absolutely outstanding. That's all I really want to say. It's a it's a big honour uh, being up here. Um, these two guys have, have won Kajis before, so it's been their company is amazing. And uh, I guess looking at, at the honour boards at the footy club every day and, and seeing some of the other names up there, um, yeah, I, I feel really privileged and, and proud uh, to be involved in, in the club and to be recognised like this. Well, Cam, you absolutely deserve to be in that company. It's a wonderful mm. story, isn't Great. it, of improvement. And we take a look at, at the scoreboards there, but Cam Guthrie on top. Uh, as we said earlier, he's been a good player for six, eight years and he really took a step up, uh, yep. All-Australian this year, and now he's first best and fair. He's first, Kaji Greaves, a consistent year. All-Australian, of course, and two proud parents out there. Sue and Andrew, they'd be very proud. They follow him everywhere. They went up to Queensland, of course. So well done to you, Cam Guthrie. Tomahawk, of course, always in the top five, finishes yep. there. He's won it before, runner-up before. He's a Coleman medalist and an All-Australian. And then Blitz. Two best and fairest. Another great year from the Ruckman, fullback, winger, utility, where whatever you want to call him. But well done to those three. Yeah, let's have a look at the rest of the leaderboard now. And uh, Danger in fourth. Uh, it was yeah. very close, you know. It's only, what, 15 votes between fourth and first. Uh, yeah. Three-time winner for Paddy. Uh, first time ever out of the top three since he's been at the club. But that's another great year for him to finish fourth. Men in goal. Amici, of course, who's up there all the time. Sam Menengola had a really, really good year. Yep. And Jed Buse, good to see uh, Busey's boy, Jed, up there. Yeah, and we talked about the local local boys too. Jed Buse, Jack Henry, yep. uh, to come eighth, Ryan Myers, 10th. So well done to them. And then look at the names on this page, oh, some uh, older players and really big names, which probably underlines the depth uh, yep. of, of the club at the moment. Well, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Stewart, who missed a few games. Gary Rowan, Jake Collajasny, the bink, as they call him. Uh, Luke Dalhouse. Uh, the Brethren, uh, and a uh, very popular man. And there's Joel. Joel will be happy with that, the skipper. Yeah, he he's two games player. with the hammy. And um, Lockie Henderson, we should give a shout out to. I just think he's uh, one of the most popular players at, at the club, and it's great to see him have uh, such a magnificent year. Um, Bill, yes. the fans, we've made it a focus tonight. Yep. We love the Cats supporters, and we want you back next year. We do indeed. So the 2021 membership, they are on sale right now. Membership.geelongcats.com.au. 2021 memberships on sale now. Uh, thank you for keeping our great club Geelong strong. We couldn't have done it without you. And stay Geelong strong at home or far away. So well done to all the members, of course, and, and, and just all the supporters, but certainly yeah. members who put their hard earn in this year. Yep. And a lot, 90%, uh, kept the money in there, which yeah. is a really, really good effort. Yep, yep, absolutely. And uh, I know you're going to do a few more th thank yous in a moment. Just quickly, though, reminder about the silent auction. That is open until 10 o'clock, so make sure you go online uh, and get onto that silent auction. Also, 30% off at the cat shop Ooh. tonight until midnight. So yeah. jump online and buy some merchandise uh, from the cat shop there. Look at Sparkly Narkle. Look Looking at Very, sparkly. very nice. He's got a bit and, of uh, lip gloss on, has he? I think he has. Mm. Matches his hair. But yeah. anyway, get on the uh, cat shop as well. Um, just quickly before you, you do those last thank yous, Billy, I wanted to say thanks to the coaches and players who yeah. sent those videos through. Of course, um, you know, they'll be looking to unwind a little bit yeah. this week, but we really appreciate that. And on top of that, the people who put this show together, it's all very different this year, but it's a big, big job. So well done to the Cats events team yes. and to the production team and the online guys for pulling all of that together because that was a, uh, a huge effort. And finally from me yep. to those players in uh, Broadbeach and wherever else you are, <laughs> have a good night, enjoy it, behave yourself, but you've earned a... Uh, yeah. 
Uh, get on the beers. A couple of uh, get on the beers uh, or a couple of froffies. But Rebecca Madden, I know she's watching. So uh, we had to say a thank you to Rebecca, the number one ticket holder, of course, uh, to Colin, to Chris, the Geelong Cats events team, as you said, the players, coaches, members, supporters, and the families who yeah. really uh, yeah. did it. To Croc Media for having us here yeah. tonight, of course. And well done again to Mark Blitzarves, to Tomahawk, old Portsy Hawkins there, <laughs> and to our winner of the 2020 Kaji Grease Medal, Cam Guthrie.